Question five says solve the following differential equation. So check to see if it's separable or not. So let's see, we have y prime. And on the right hand side, you can write it as x squared minus 3x squared y. Here you can factor out uh, x squared. This is dy over dx equals to x squared, 1 minus 3y. Well, let's do the rest of the algebra. Here we get dy divided by 1 minus 3y equals to x squared dx. Separable? Yes. So since it's separable, just take the integral of both sides. So this is the algebra part. Now the calculus part. Okay, here remember now you can use, uh, by taking the integral, you can use, well, um, substitution. Let the u be one minus three y du is negative three dy. So wherever you see dy, you can write down du divided by negative three. So you get negative a third and ln of absolute value of one minus three y. And on the right hand side, you have a third x cubed plus constant of integration. Very well. So our job, our goal is to try to isolate y on one side. What are we going to do? We're going to multiply everything by negative three. Now we're just going to do some algebra, going back and forth between calculus and algebra. It help us to eventually try to isolate y on one side, or if we can't, we can leave it as the implicit form. So multiply everything by negative three. We get a line of absolute value of one minus three y equals to negative x cubed minus c sub y. Very well. So now your absolute value of one minus three y is equal to e to power negative x cubed minus c sub y. So far so good. So here you get absolute value of one minus three y equals to e to negative x cubed times e to power negative c sub y. Now, since you have absolute value, let me continue writing it here. You get one minus three y equals to plus minus e to power negative c sub one, e to power negative x to the third x cubed. Okay, so as usual, since we have a messy constant here, let us just rename it. Let us call this guy, for example, c sub two, c, k, anything that you like. So what do we get? We get one minus three y equals to c sub two times e to power negative x cubed. Very well. So here you can write three y equals to one minus uh, c sub two e to negative x cubed. So y is equal to a third minus c sub two divided by three e to power negative x cubed. Again, you have another constant. Let us have another name for it. Let us call this guy, for example, c sub three or just c in general. So what's left? You're left with y equals to a third minus e to power negative x cubed. We've got the general solution don't forget C, general solution for this differential equation, which is separable. General solution. Now let us check to see if this guy is linear or not. If it's linear, well, we can find the integrating factor, multiply everything by integrating factor. We already know that we can write the left-hand side in compact form and then just take the integral of both sides. So since I need space, I'm going to erase this part and go um, step by step. So let me just 
erase the whole thing. I'm just going to keep this guy here and eventually we can compare this. So let me write it here from separable method. We got this general solution. I'm going to show you we get the same thing when we have another method. This was the general solution. So check if it is linear or not. How do we define a linear differential equation of order one? You have a one x y prime plus a sub zero x y equals to, for example, a function like g of x. So take a look at this. You have y prime plus three x squared y equals to x squared. Just compare them term by term. Here you have y prime, you have a coefficient, which is invisible, means that the coefficient is one. Then you have y and you have a sub zero of x, a function, a term in x, which is three x squared. So far, so good. And here on the right-hand side, you have x squared. So we have a non-homogeneous linear ODE. It is a non-homogeneous linear ODE. Okay, well, so since it is linear, we can apply the linear method as well. So again, for different differential equations, you might be able to apply different methods of sort of solution. So first, write it in standard form. Is it written in standard form? Is the coefficient of your y prime is one? Yes, so it's checked. The second step, find the integrating factor. Integrating factor in this case, so let me write down one, it is written in standard form. Two, find the integrating factor. Well, so e to the power integral px dx. What is our px? Our px, px is 3x squared. So you get e to the power integral 3x squared dx. Well, this is just a simple integral. What do we have? We have e to the power. So you have 3 over 3x cubed or just x cubed. This is our integrating factor. We found it. Our integrating factor is e to power x cubed. Now, step three, multiply everything by the integrating factor. Okay, step three, multiply. So e to power x cubed times y prime plus e to power x cubed times 3x squared, which is the derivative of x cubed, so far so good, times y equals to, well, here we have x squared e to power x cubed. Everything looks absolutely great so far. So now in the step four, it says, hey, write down left-hand side in the compact form of the product rule. The product rule is written in expanded form. We have the derivative of y times e to power x cubed times the derivative of e to power x cubed, which is 3x squared, e to power x cubed times y. And on the right hand side, you have some function. So your left hand side becomes d dx, the derivative of e to x cubed times y. And on the right hand side, we have x squared e to x cubed. Now let us move on to the last step, step five, and take the integral of all sides. Five, take the integral of all sides. 
Take danger. So let's see. The integral of the derivative e to x cubed y is equal to the integral of x squared e to x cubed dx. Well, these two are opposite of each other. You can get rid of the derivative and the integral. So you're left with e to power x cubed y equals to. Here, you can use the substitution method. Your u is x cubed, the u is 3x squared dx. We don't have three, so it's going to be a third e to u, which is e to power x cubed plus the constant of integration, c. Very well. Now, to isolate y, divide everything by e to power x cubed that's pure algebra. Y is equal to a third e to x cubed divided by e to x cubed plus c over e to power x cubed. So these two, they cancel out each other. What's left? Y equals to a third plus c e to power negative x cubed. So why we have negative sign, positive sign, you could change this constant with negative sign multiplied by that and call it, for example, k. So here you can write it as plus capital C 